Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I'm sharing another what I eat in a day and so here's what I had to eat one day this week. For breakfast I made banana porridge with a spiced berry compote. I first added one cup of rolled oats to a pan along with two cups of almond milk and a pinch of salt. I left that on a low heat whilst I added a banana to a bowl. Then using a masher I just mashed it up. I then added the mashed banana into the porridge stirred it through well and continued to cook it until it was ready. Once done, I transferred it into a bowl and then back in the same pan, I then added in one cup of frozen mixed berries, one tablespoon of maple syrup, and then a pinch of nutmeg, a pinch of ground ginger, a pinch of allspice and a pinch of cinnamon. I then stirred that through and cooked it off for around two minutes until it was a little bit sticky and the berries had defrosted and then I just poured that over the top of the porridge. This was such a nice warming winter breakfast. I've done this before with fresh blueberries but I had some frozen berries that needed using up and I thought that adding the different spices into it would be really lovely. The banana in the porridge adds a little bit of sweetness but it also makes it really creamy. I love adding it into my overnight oats as well. I love warm banana and the flavour of that just goes really nicely with the spiced berry compote. Later on in the morning I made a beetroot latte and for this I used the beetroot powder from the Matcha Reserve who have very kindly sponsored today's video. This is from their superfood powder range, it's vegan, non-GMO, as well as for lattes it's also great in smoothies, juices or baking and it has a really great range of health benefits including helping to increase energy lowering blood pressure and improving exercise stamina. To make the latte, I just measured out a cup of oat milk. I used the Oatly Barista because it's so nice and creamy. I just brought that up to a gentle boil in a small saucepan. Then back in my cup, I added a teaspoon of the beetroot powder, one tablespoon of maple syrup, and one tablespoon of boiling water. And then I used a milk frother just to blend everything up well. I then used the frother again to froth up the milk until it was really foamy me and I poured in the majority of the milk, gave it another mix and then poured in the remaining foam. I then just sprinkled a little more beetroot powder over the top. It looks pretty but it also adds a bit more flavour. This tastes so much better than it sounds, don't knock it until you've tried it. I always get beetroot lattes on the go but recently I've started making them at home as they're so easy to do. It's still got an ever so slightly earthy taste to it and it kind of reminds me a bit of a malted milk drink but the maple syrup sweetens it nicely and it's just something a little bit different. Stay tuned because I actually have a video coming up on my favorite superfood lattes very soon. For lunch I made some jackfruit tuna hemp mayonnaise toasties. For this I first made a lemon hemp mayonnaise by adding a cup of hemp seeds a quarter of a cup of filtered water, the juice of half a small lemon, two tablespoons of olive oil, one teaspoon of onion powder and a pinch of salt into the small bowl of my Magimix food processor. And I just blended that up until it was as smooth as possible. I then took a can of jackfruit, you guys know my jackfruit obsession at the moment, and I just emptied it out into a small bowl and then pulled it apart using two forks. I next added in a small can of drained sweet corn, one nori sheet that I'd finely cut up, the lemon hemp mayonnaise and seasoned it with salt and black pepper and then I gave it all a really good mix together. I cut up some crusty bread into slices and popped those in the toaster to toast and once they were done I placed them on a plate with some of the jackfruit tuna on one half. I then added on some mixed salad, closed the toasty and cut it in half. I then did another half because I knew one wouldn't fill me up but two was probably a bit too much. I then just placed some more salad on the side of the plate along with some chopped tomatoes and drizzled on some balsamic vinegar. My standard salad with a sandwich. This was the first time I'd actually made this. I had the idea in my head. I thought jackfruit would work really well as a tuna alternative. 
The norishi obviously has that kind of fish-like taste to it and the lemon hemp mayo works so nicely with it too. I love adding the sweet corn into mine but you could also use spring onion or red onion and you could use vegan mayonnaise instead of making one. I call this a toasty, I mean it's not how you'd really make a toasty. I still don't have a toasty maker so this is the closest I can get. I did have some jackfruit tuna left over and I just stored it in an airtight container in the fridge and I used it up within three days. But this would also work really well in a salad, as a jacket potato filling, in a regular sandwich or also on crackers. I went right through to dinner and for that I made some creamy mushroom bolognese shells. I first added a tablespoon of oil to a large pan on a medium heat. I then finely chopped a white onion, added it to the pan and then minced three cloves of garlic and added those in too. I cooked that down until soft before then adding in a teaspoon of paprika, a tablespoon of dried mixed herbs and two bay leaves and then I just stirred those three to coat the onion. Next I diced up a red pepper and added that to the pan along with a tablespoon of tomato puree. I stirred that through and fried it off whilst I then minced 600 grams of mushrooms. I then added the mushrooms to the pan followed by two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. I stirred that well, then allowed that to continue to cook for around 20 minutes until the mushrooms had softened. After 20 minutes, I then added in a can of chopped tomatoes, a can of coconut milk, half a cup of vegetable stock, one tablespoon of vegan Worcester sauce, and I seasoned it with some salt and black pepper. I gave everything a really good stir, brought it up to a boil, then left it to reduce slightly, and meanwhile I cooked the pasta. I just filled another pan with boiling water and a good pinch of salt. I then added in my large pasta shells, and I left those to cook until al dente, and then drained off the water. At this point I preheated my oven to 180 degrees Celsius and the bolognese had thickened nicely so I spooned a layer of that into the bottom of a large baking dish and then one by one I placed the shells in and filled them with the bolognese. I ended up doing near enough two layers like this and then I just spooned the rest of the bolognese over the top. I then sprinkled on some fresh chopped parsley and then I placed that in the oven to bake for around 25 minutes. Once it was done, I removed it and just left it to cool for a little bit because it holds its heat really well. I then dished it up between two pasta bowls and sprinkled some more fresh chopped parsley over the top. My mushroom bolognese is probably one of my all-time favourite recipes anyway, but adding in the coconut milk makes it next level. It's so creamy and flavourful and so delicious with these giant pasta shells, but it's also great on spaghetti or any other kind of pasta. This actually made two large portions altogether. It could definitely serve four though with maybe like a side salad or garlic bread or something, but overall it's just a really tasty filling and winter warming dinner. Then for dessert I had a piece of the new Wicked Kitchen Red Velvet Brownie. This range is 100% vegan, I love their pizzas, they also do things like ready meals, but they've just brought out some new products and sometimes these things take a little while to reach Ireland after they've launched in the UK, so I was so excited when I saw this. As the name would suggest, it's a chocolate brownie, but it has a melting raspberry ganache and these sparkly sprinkles on the top. I just had a square with a few fresh raspberries on the side. I thought it would go really nicely and it was an attempt to make it seem a little bit healthier. It's a really nice texture, cakey but not dry. It's really rich but then you get the tart, refreshing raspberry coming through. It's also really nice warmed up for 20 seconds or so in the microwave. It's just amazing that we have vegan options like this now and even though it's pricier than a non-vegan dessert, I'm willing to try all of these new things to help keep the demand for vegan products up. And that is it for another day and that's it for another day on my plate. I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, all of the recipes are written up in the description box below. Don't forget to check out the Matcha Reserve. I have linked to them as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!